I think a lot of people, um, certainly myself being one of them, was taken by storm by um, um, what turned out to be a double life. You know, personal life is personal life, you know, I mean, you should leave them alone. Well, I've been doing the politics on Staten Island since 2001, and I've never seen the interest in this congressional race especially that I've seen this year. Well, it's certainly a, um, a race that uh, we're going to have to sit down afterwards and write down uh, a story uh, about what happened. It's a story that has to be told. Staten Island, New York City's least populated and most remote borough, dominates the 13th Congressional District. It's nothing like the rest of New York City. Here, there's the tranquility at odds with the hustle and bustle of Manhattan and other boroughs. But peace comes with a price. Residents complain of being neglected by the city government and say they're the forgotten borough. For nearly 50 years, Staten Island was home to the Fresh Kills landfill, New York City's dump. Fresh Kills was closed in 2001 and is in the process of being reclaimed. But for many, the indignity lingers. Residents of Staten Island feel they need a champion in Congress, somebody who will fight to get them what they deserve. They felt they had this in Republican Congressman Vito Pacella. The night before last, I made an But in early May, Pacella announced that he had been arrested for drinking and driving in Northern Virginia. Then he unveiled another shocker a three-year-old daughter from an extramarital relationship with a Virginia woman. By the end of the month, Fasella had announced his retirement from the U.S. Congress. The political world was stunned and upended. Republicans have held the 13th since 1981. And with Fasella's sudden departure began a wild showdown that would see one candidate dead, the district's once dominant Republican Party in shambles, and a Democrat poised to win the seat for the first time in 25 years. Clear, concise answers to where they stand on important issues. On a recent Monday morning, the four candidates vying to replace Fasella met at a forum hosted by AARP. The Republican nominee is retired State Assemblyman Bob Stranieri, but he was far from anyone's first choice. Well, he's been somebody that the Republican Party on Staten Island has battled with for a long time, many people believe that he was only supposed to be a placeholder candidate, that if Congressman Fasella ever wanted to get back in the race, that, you know, Bob Sturmier would will willingly step aside. In late May, the county Republican committees had coalesced behind financier Frank Powers. But less than a month after the selection, the 68-year-old Powers died of a heart attack. Republicans struggled for months to come up with a new candidate as one by one their top picks passed on the race. It became quickly apparent that without Fasella, the party had few options. Well, the problem with the Republican Party, I think you find with any party that's in control for too long, is it sort of became very insular. It's, it became very focused on Congressman Fasella and a few lawmakers around him. So when that person crumbles, there is no center anymore for people to gather around. And that's sort of has what happened. Enter Stranieri, a candidate unpopular within his own party leadership who nonetheless won the September primary. Weeks later, the party tried to push Stranieri off the ballot with a judicial nomination. He declined. Politics is rough and tumble. I didn't want to be a judge. I didn't know anything about this. I never authorized it, and I quickly filed a declination so it could be very clear. Stranieri's not well liked by Republicans in Staten Island. Michael Long is the chair of the Conservative Party of New York. The party has usually backed the Republican candidate in the 13th. But that changed when Stranieri won the primary. He had less than a stellar record as an assemblyman in Albany. Uh, he was never a mover, shaker in the conservative movement. He really never stood up on tough votes. He never stood out in the crowd. Uh, Fasella stood up in Congress, okay? Long's guy is Tim Cochran, a former Marine and a businessman. But the party did not recruit Cochran until late in the game and long concedes his candidate has an uphill battle. Could we get lucky? Sure we could. Uh, but uh, I'd be kidding you and kidding myself if I thought it was a, 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 a snap. Suddenly, the Democrats find themselves in the position to reclaim the 13th. Even their candidate, New York City Council Member Mike McMahon, 
is surprised by the turn of events. Well, clearly the fact uh, that uh, the incumbent, Vito Fisella, announced that he would not run for re-election, and that changed the dynamic dramatically. Uh, agree with him or not, his uh, favorability ratings uh, in the district were pretty high, um, and it would have been a difficult race. McMahon didn't enter the race until after Fisella announced his retirement. But once he did, he quickly won support from the county party committees and the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Now McMahon is favored to win the seat. McMahon's support is reinforced by local residents at the famous Danino's Pizzeria in downtown Staten Island. I'm not a big stranger. Just never was. I don't like what he stands for. You know, McMahon will bring money in. You know, he's good. He tries his best. You know, he's good for our neighborhood. He's a neighborhood guy. I support Mike McMahon. I've known Mike a long time. So uh, he's very good for Staten Island. On November 4th, the long saga to replace Vito Fisella will end, and the island's struggle to escape from the other borough's shadow will resume.